Greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. This is your Apostle Nicole Reddick and I am coming to you today with a message on things to think on for. Things to think on for. Philippians the fourth chapter the eighth verse. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of a good report, if there be any virtue, or if there be any praise, we must think on these things. Verse 9 says, For those things, the true, the honest, the just, the pure, the lovely, the good report, these things that you are learning and have received and you are receiving and you have seen and heard in me do, if you think on these things, the God of peace shall be with you. Whatsoever things are pure. Whatsoever things are pure is the title of the message, the subtitle of the message this morning. Think on these things. Things to think on. Heavenly Father, I just thank you for this word. I thank you for your love and your grace that you have bestowed upon us. I thank you that... You gave us your grace not to take advantage of it, but that we would be in communion and have eternal life. I thank you for my eternal life right now and for every, the eternal life of all the believers. I pray that you would strengthen them. I pray that you would open up their eyes and ears of understanding, giving them the spirit a wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of you, strengthening them that they may have an understanding and be enlightened by what to think on in the kingdom. As heavenly citizens, these are things we ought to think on. And Holy Ghost, I pray that you would have your way for I am a yielded vessel unto you, that you may bring glory to God and honor Christ, that he may be lifted up. In the potentate king, Jesus Christ's name, who lives forever and ever, amen and amen. Things to think on for, and this is Converting Souls Apostolic Ministries. Philippians 4, 8, whatsoever things are pure. What does it mean to be pure? It means to be clean. Did we learn that's what the word of God does for us? It cleanses us. Figuratively, it means to be perfect innocent. We understand what perfect means in the Bible, to be upright in your moral character. It means to be matured in the faith, in the spirit. So God is saying, whatsoever things are pure, you got to think on these things. What be going through your mind?
In the Greek, to be pure, the word means hagnos. It means to be chaste. And chaste means freedom from defilement or impurity. That means to be clean. That means to be pure. It also means to be sincere. Are you sincere in your everyday dealings? See, that's one of the requirements of God. That's one of the requirements to be perfect, to be mature. You've got to be sincere in your everyday dealings. When you deal with people, are you sincere? You know, we go around with these titles. But are we truly walking in the things that God called us to in our heavenly citizenship? Are we really walking in heavenly thinking? Whatsoever things are pure, things to think on. What is in your thinking? Philippians, the first chapter. Things to think on. We on whatsoever things are pure. Verse 9. And this I pray, that your love may abound yet more and more in knowledge and in all judgment. I want you to understand something. If you think that the Bible only speaks of judge not lest ye be judged, and you don't think you have judgment, then you are off. The apostle Paul says, and this I pray that your love may abound yet more and more in knowledge and in all judgment. You have the ability to judge, and you do it without thinking. But you must abound in your judgment and love. You must judge righteous judgment. Now, next verse, that you may approve the things that are excellent. You can't prove what God wants you to prove if you don't have love abounding in knowledge and in judgment. And if you think you don't need judgment, then you're not in the perfect place yet. You're not in the place of maturity. Because you can't prove the things that are excellent. If you can't judge right from wrong. If you can't judge the spirit of truth from the spirit of error. If you can't judge. You can't prove the things that are excellent. If you don't have knowledge and love. You can't prove the things that are excellent because the things that are excellent are of the almighty God. They come from the heavenlies. He says that you may approve the things that are excellent, that you may be sincere and without offense to the day of Christ. Some people throw your sincerity in the trash. But I want you to know today, as long as in your heart you are sincere, how they take it is up to them. Christ was sincere, and many of them got offended, and they gathered false witnesses against him, and they cast him down. And then eventually, the purpose and plan of God came to pass. He was crucified, buried, and in the third day he rose again. So we must understand, being sincere is being pure. It's a thing to think on. But there's steps to getting to 
being sincere. You've got to have love abounding in knowledge and judgment that you may approve, that you may be sincere and without offense. What does it mean to be sincere? To be clear, to be clearly discerning of clear spiritual judgment or discernment in all things, both of Christian faith and practice. We're talking about the heavenly citizenship here. If you're a believer, you need to pay close attention because this is perfecting you. And this is my job as an apostle. This would be my job as a pastor preaching to you today, as an evangelist, as a prophet, as a bishop. This is our call to perfect the saints, to bring you into alignment with God Almighty through Jesus Christ and the power of the Spirit. So to be sincere in your everyday dealings, you've got to have clear discernment, which really is spiritual judgment. So I don't want anybody, I, I just don't want to hear that I'm not supposed to judge from a believer. You don't judge the world. Jesus didn't come to condemn the world. He spoke the truth in love. And those that heard it was converted like you and me. We came to the faith. We believe the word of God. God's word is for correction and reproof and instruction and righteousness to the heavenly citizens. And to bring others into the faith, into the sheepfold. So in all things, we must have spiritual judgment or what we call discernment of the spirit in all things in the Christian faith. Philippians verse, well, let's go down to verse 15. <coughs> Some indeed preach Christ even of envy and strife, and some also of goodwill. Some preach Christ of envy and strife. Some preach Christ of jealousy that has no place In the pulpit. If you're going to preach, we just learned that it must be in love, abounding in knowledge and all judgment. In goodwill. Some do it in goodwill. Not in envy and in strife. In jealousy. That means you're not sincere. If you're doing it in envy and strife, you're not sincere and you add affliction. You add affliction to the people. But the Bible says some do it in goodwill. <clears throat> Well, what does that mean? Some preach and set a defense of the gospel. That means it's an appointed time for people to receive the good news of Jesus Christ. You do it in goodwill. What is God saying to his house today? What is the message of goodwill? Today I'm talking about things to think on. Whatsoever things are pure, this is done in goodwill. What 
whatsoever things are pure. To mature you, you must learn the way of the kingdom. Whatsoever things are pure is helping you to change your mindset and on how to think as a believer. You can't think the way you used to think as a non-believer. What you think matters to God. It may not matter to the man next door or to the woman or to the child. What matters because God knows your thought process. So whatsoever things are pure, he's saying, hey, I need you to think on these things. You're in the heavenly kingdom now. This is how you ought to think. In goodwill. The one preached Christ of contention. They are not sincere, supposing to add affliction to my bonds. But the other of love knowing that I am set for the defense of the gospel. What then, notwithstanding every way, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is preached, and I therein do rejoice, yea, and will rejoice. Sometimes you are going to have people that are envious and strife and have strife against you. And then you're going to have those that are have goodwill against you. They're going to push you. They're going to help you. But both help. Why? Because the ones that are envious and strife, they are like the thorn in the flesh. But the ones that are of goodwill, they keep encouraging you. And they push you forward. Which one are you as a preacher? He says, for I know that this shall turn to my salvation through your prayer and the supply of the spirit of Jesus Christ, according to my earnest expectation and my hope that in nothing I shall be ashamed, but that with all boldness as always, so now also Christ shall be magnified in my body, whether it be life or death. For to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. That should be every believer's belief. For to live is Christ, but to die is gain. No matter what people say, when you die to self, it's spiritual gain. When you get rid of following the soulish realm, the flesh is spiritual gain. Your spirit stays strong and it gets stronger and stronger. But when you follow the flesh, you have not died to it and your spirit stay weak. Things to think on. How am I living my life? Am I dying? Is there spiritual gain? Am I dying to self? Is there spiritual gain? Are you in the heavenly kingdom? Second Peter, the third chapter. Second Peter, the third chapter. <clears throat> the first verse. This second epistle, beloved, I now write unto you, and both which I stir up. See, when he wrote these epistles, these were teaching letters. And so understand, he's trying to stir up something inside of them. Every time a preacher preach, he's supposed to be trying to stir up something inside of you. He says, stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance. 
by way of remembrance things to think on. When you're remembering, you're thinking on something. And your remembrance that you may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets and of the commandments of us, the apostles of the Lord and Savior, knowing this first that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lust and saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. We must understand. He said, you got to be mindful. You got to think heavily. What did the holy prophet say? Things to think on whatsoever things are pure. The clean things. What have the holy prophets spoken of? Uh, the Messiah, Jesus Christ. Uh, the pure one, the holy one of Israel. The Lord is Savior. What, did the holy, what do the holy prophets speak of today? They got to be holy now. God's prophets are holy. They set apart and sanctified. What does it mean to have a clear mind or a pure mind? To have a mind that's clear and transparent. You're making mindful of the words spoken of the holy prophets. You're remembering the things of God. You're remembering the things that are of heaven. You have set your affections. That means you, you have a mind appointed to the things of God. Do you set your affection on things above or on things of this earth? You have to be aware of your heavenly citizenship. And your mindset got to change a little bit. So I'm giving you some things to think on. Whatsoever things are pure. I'm preaching this to you to stir up your mind. And the pureness of God. Second Peter one. The apostle Peter knew he 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 is a good preacher to follow. See those the apostles in the Bible. They are good examples for us, um, but the best example is Jesus Christ. But he's preaching here because he's always telling us to remember things. Um, he wants us to think on things that are right. Um, think on things that are pure, that are holy, that are just, that are honest. Now... We went over the scripture in 2 Peter 3, 1. In Philippians 1, 15. That the love may abound in the knowledge. This is the knowledge that we must abound in. 2 Peter chapter 1. It says, Simon Peter, servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have obtained like precious faith, with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. According as his divine power, according as his Holy Ghost, as his spirit of holiness, have given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. Through the knowledge Knowledge is in your mind of him, of Christ, that have called us to glory and virtue. What are you thinking?
hit on is whatsoever things are pure. To think on whatsoever things are pure, you need the knowledge of Jesus Christ whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust and besides this giving all diligence we must add to our faith virtue and to virtue knowledge and to knowledge temperance and to temperance patience and to patience godliness and to godliness brotherly kindness and to brotherly kindness charity for if these things be in you and abound they make you that you shall neither be barren mm -mm -mm. that means you're not going to be idle if you have these things nor are fruitful that means you're going to know some things. That means to be fruitful means you have knowledge of. To be fruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. You've got to be fruitful in his knowledge. That's why the love of God needs to abound in all knowledge that you receive. And if it's in your heavenly citizenship, you need it on the Lord Jesus Christ. But we have to know that we need to add to our faith these things to be fruitful and active in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. It says in verse 9, But he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off and hath forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. That means you ain't thinking on the right thing. If you're starting to be blind again, you can't see clearly. And if you can't see clearly, you're not thinking clearly. In this book, The Divine Nature, we're in communion with and we take on through the divine knowledge of Jesus Christ by the spirit the divine power the Holy Ghost the spirit of the living God verse 12 he says wherefore I will be not negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things he says I got to get you thinking on these things I have to get it back in your mind it must be Though you know them and be established in the present truth. Um, so in other words, um, if somebody reminding you, uh, if they put back in your mind the truth of the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, uh, he's putting you in mindful of things that are pure. He wants you to think on them a little bit. Uh, he wants you to become Fruitful and active in the knowledge of Christ. You already know these things and you're established in them. But he said, I got to put you in remembrance. I got to get you thinking heavenly. Think on these things. Think on these things. Things to think on. Now, Peter is talking, the apostle, and he's saying, this is true spiritual living. This will give you long-lasting spiritual life. Not just living. You'll be walking in your spiritual life as you are living. You'll be fruitful in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That means you'll be active in things. In the knowledge of him. 
You've got to be both. I'm not just talking about putting your hands to this and that. I'm saying in your mind, you've got to be fruitful and active in his knowledge. You've got to think on the right things. Whatsoever things are pure. He's saying, I got to put you in remembrance on what to think on. And although you know it and you establish in this present truth, uh, it's okay to put you in remembrance. I'm going to rejoice with you. I'm going to love on you. Uh, we can rejoice together. You've got to think on these things. I just want to encourage you to think on these things for your true spiritual living. Psalms. The book of Psalms, the first chapter. The book of Psalms, the first chapter. The book of Psalms, the first chapter. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, the first verse. Nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. He doesn't walk in the counsel of the ungodly. He's not thinking on those things, the ungodly things. When you walk in the counsel of the ungodly, you think on ungodly things. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. You've got to delight in God's teachings. That's what law here means. Law means the instruction, the doctrine, the teaching of Almighty God Himself. And in His law doth He meditate day and night. What is your thinking on? Are you thinking on God's teaching, on His instruction? And, and on his doctrine and the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Uh, are you thinking heavenly? He says you've got to meditate on it day and night. Are you doing your 10% of your day to God? Are you devoting it to God? That gives you... 24 minutes at least out of a 24-hour day to think on God. That's your challenge for the year. Give them 24 hours. That's 10% of your day. It's like you're tithing. When you get your paycheck, you are supposed to give God 10%. I give God 10% of what little I get every month to CSIM, CSAM, 83207-3066-1135-1995. I give 10%. But I give God my time daily. I give a little more than what I'm asking you to give. But I want you to know that you must give him. I'm challenging you on this. Meditate on him for 24 hours. Think on things that are pure and you know our God is pure. In verse three, we understand this is the result of doing what God say. <clears throat> He says, and you shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bring forth his fruit. Um, that means you will be fruitful in the knowledge. Your spirit will be strong. Uh, you will be like the tree planted by the rivers of water that bring forth his fruit in his season. And his leaf also shall not wither. And whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. You will be prosperous in the kingdom. Your leaf shall not wither. That means you're not going to fade away. You may come against some hard times, but if you're meditating on them day and night, if you know the teachings of God, God say when you go through the fire, that means you having trials of life. You will not be burned. He said when you pass through the waters, that means the trials of life again. 
again. The, you will not drown. The, the waters will not overtake you. In other words, your trial and your situation, you will not die in it. Your leaf shall not wither. Your leaf shall not wither. And whatsoever you do shall prosper. I want you to know, make that your delight. Meditate on the word of God. I'm challenging you for 24 minutes of the day. Tie 10% of your day. I don't care how you do it. You spend 10 minutes in the morning before you go to work. You spend 10 minutes at night before you go to bed. You spend four minutes at lunchtime just reading a Bible verse. Think on him. Put him in your time. Give him 24 minutes of your day. And I, I know God will bless you. And this is for spiritual living. You want your spirit stronger. You want to grow more in God. You've got to invest. You got to think on things from above. You've got to think on whatsoever things are pure. You've got to remember what God has spoken to you. You've got to know some of the teachings of the Lord Jesus Christ and you will abound. So what is this tree Christ is talking about? And what is it to be prosperous? In Isaiah 61, verse 3. Isaiah 61, verse 3. It says, To point unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes. And this is the Spirit of the Lord being upon you the oil of joy for mourning the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness that you might be called trees of righteousness this is the tree planted by the rivers of water you will become a tree of righteousness why because you're meditating day and night you're giving him 24 minutes of your 24 day and then not only that you will be called the trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. And you've got to understand what a tree of righteousness is. It's not established on remembering things that are not pure. It's not established on things that are not true. It's not established on things that are not honest. It's established by God as a tree of righteousness by thinking on things that he teaches you. The truth of his word. When you meditate day and night on his law, and his law just means the teachings and the doctrines of him. Who don't want to do that in the heavenly kingdom? The teachings of God, they are true. And this tree planted by the rivers of water, this tree of righteousness planted by the Lord, the spirit of the Lord is upon you to help you fulfill the righteousness of the law, which is the Ten Commandments. But we're not talking about the Ten Commandments here. We're talking about the teaching of the Holy Ghost uh, from the Holy Bible. All teachings from the Bible is law of the kingdom. It's the law of the spirit of life. Uh, the law of the spirit of life in Christ has made me free from the law of sin and death. Uh, you've got to think a little spiritually. You've got to think outside of what you've been thinking. Think a little differently.
You want to be that tree of righteousness, you better meditate on God's teachings day and night. Uh, every time one come across the pulpit, uh, take 24 hours of your day on Monday and Tuesday and think about what the pastor has said on Sunday. On Wednesday, you got a free day, you go to church, you got your 24 out four minutes of your 24 day. On Thursday and Friday, you take 24 minutes of that day and you think on what he said Wednesday. On Saturday, get in the Bible yourself for 24 hours a day. Or play your gospel music. Think on the Lord. Whatsoever things are heavenly. Whatsoever things are pure. Things to think on. In Jeremiah, God is the fountain of living waters. This is why you will be planted by God and become a tree of righteousness. The Holy Spirit is that living water. He is the living water. Jeremiah 17. Thirteen. O Lord, the hope of Israel, all that forsake thee shall be ashamed, and they that depart from me shall be written in the earth because they have forsaken the Lord the fountain of living waters you want to live in our heavenly citizenship we've got to have the fountain of living waters and we cannot forsake him Another thing, verse 7, blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord and whose hope the Lord is, for he shall be as a tree planted by the waters. That's the same thing the psalmist said in the book of Psalms, verse 1. He says, and spread out her roots by the river and shall not see when he cometh, but her leaves shall be green and shall not be careful in the year of drought, neither shall cease from yielding fruit. The heart is deceitful above all things, and desperately wicked, who can know it? I, the Lord, searcheth the heart. I try the reins, and even to give every man according to his ways, and according to the fruit of his doing. I want you to understand, purity got to be one of your fruit. Things to think on. I want you to be a tree planted by the Lord whose leaf does not wither because the fountain of living waters is feeding the roots. You need the root of God in your life. Jesus, in the book of John, the seventh chapter, he said... I want to give you this living water. If you knew who you spoke to, I want to give you this living water. This living water represents the Holy Ghost. Um, it is the fountain of the Lord. And as the fountain flows through you and me, he said, out of our belly shall flow rivers of living water. Are, are the living waters living in you? Are they supplying the spirit, its roots, with with strength, that your leaf should not wither, is giving life to your tree. Do you have this fountain? Isaiah, the 12th chapter, tells us to draw. I've got to read it for you, though. Isaiah, the 12th chapter. You've got to draw. Behold, God is your salvation. You must trust and not be afraid. For the Lord Jehovah is your strength and song. He has become your salvation. Therefore, with joy shall you draw water out of the wells of salvation. You can't get this living water no other way. You need Jesus Christ. You can't get it no other way. You've got to draw from the wells of God. He is a fountain of living water. Through Christ Jesus, we receive the living water. And we are trees of righteousness planted by God. 
I'm trying to help you. Give you something else to think on. I don't know what you've been thinking on. That God will give me messages like this. Uh, but he's saying I need you to think on things. Whatsoever things are pure. Every time you take communion, you're thinking on the things of Christ. Every time you take communion, Christ commanded us. He commanded us. He commanded us to remember, to think on him, to think again. Let's go to John 4. This is one of the things we must think on. This is what I was telling you. He was telling someone. Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God and who it is that saith to you, he said, If you knew the gift of God, if you know who it is that's talking to you, I'm talking to you and I know the gift. He said, If you knew, if you knew, Give me to drink, thou would have asked of me, he said, and he would, and I would have given you living water. And then in verse 13, he says, whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. He's talking about the natural water. He's saying, but whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. Uh, but the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. Uh, the fountains of living water, we get it through Jesus Christ. Uh, and you've got to think on these things. Uh, he wants to make you a tree planted uh, whose leaf should not wither. He wants you to make you a tree of righteousness. But you need the living water, the fountains of living water. Are you thinking on these things? When you take communion, are you remembering the teachings of Christ? Are you remembering the law of the spirit of life that was in him? He, he is giving you that same spirit through the living waters. Whatsoever things are pure, he is clean. And he deals sincerely. Pure minds. He wants us to have a pure mind. And in order to do that, you've got to think on things that are pure. You've got to think and meditate on the things of God. Day and night, 24 minutes of your day. That's all I'm challenging you to do. Give God 24 minutes every day. Listen to your gospel music. Read the scripture. Meditate on one Bible verse. You can take John 4, 10, 13, and 14. And you can just, or John 10, and 14 and read on the living water that feeds your spirit uh, that makes you come alive that gives you fruit that makes your leaf not to he said it won't wither in the drought that means when there's you know what a drought is there's no water there's no word coming forth of God. There's no truth. You might be receiving some false doctrine, but God says your leaf shall not wither if you drink of the fountains of living water. You must drink of him. You must understand that Christ gives us this water. And God will change how you think. He will wash away the false doctrine and give you the true doctrine. He will take out what's causing you to be hindered in life. He will take out what's causing your spirit to lose its strength. He will take out, and he's maturing us, and he will continue to mature us and make us trees of righteousness when we think of things that are pure. He wants our minds clear and transparent in truth by the divine, our sovereign God and Savior, Jesus Christ. He is of divine, and we are connected to the divine. We heard what Peter said. By the power of the divine, we are connected. That's the living water, the living water. We must get it from Christ 
and through Christ. Thinking on things, whatsoever things are pure. I want you to be mindful of this. I want you to understand that God knows where you are. You've got to understand where you are. And you've got to know in your heart. And God is wanting to mature you. To perfect you. And so one of the ways he's doing it is causing you to think. Think on things a little differently. Think on things, things to think on whatsoever things are pure. You've been desiring the Holy Ghost, the living water. Well, you got to do it God's way. You can't get it your way. You got to think on these things. You've got to think on your heavenly citizenship and the word of God. The word of God. This is how you begin to think on things above and not on things of this earth. This shows you your heavenly citizenship. The way you should walk. The way you should think. The things you should remember. Think on these things. Heavenly Father, I just thank you for your word. I thank you for your love through your word. I thank you for, for just loving us enough to give us this word, this law, this truth, this teaching. For it is the spirit of life. For those of us who live in your heavenly kingdom here on earth. And those desiring to enter into your heavenly kingdom here on earth. Thank you for teaching us the ways that our spirits will be trees of righteousness. That our leaf shall not wither. And whatsoever thing we do shall prosper. When we think on the things that are pure. So Father, I pray. That every mind receive this message in truth and in righteousness and love. That they can learn and that they can grow in faith. And in the knowledge of you, Jesus Christ. The scripture says that we will not be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of you, Lord Jesus. God, I pray that, that you begin to pour into people that they will not be idle, that they will be active and fruitful in the knowledge of Christ. In the knowledge of you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for the fountains of living water. Thank you, God, that you pour out this fountain in us. Uh, and then out of us becomes that living water. It comes out of us. It runs out of us, out of our bellies. And it's more than just tongues. It's discernment. Uh, it's prophecy. It's a word of knowledge, a word of wisdom. It's bearing fruits of peace, joy, and love, and so on and so on, Lord. I need this living water, God. Refresh us, God. Fill us with your spirit. Fill us with the living water in the name of Jesus Christ, the potentate king who lives forever and ever. Hallelujah, God. We thank you for the living water. We thank you that you're going to fill us. You're going to convert some. You're going to restore some. We thank you that you're going to fill to overflowing that out of our bellies, that out of our bellies, that out of our bellies shall flow this river out of our spirit out of our spirit we give life to others because we have this overflow this fountain from you that's pouring out into others this fountain from you we thank you for it, lord we give you the glory. We say hallelujah, hallelujah to your name. There is none like you in all the earth. We praise you and we honor you this day, God. And we thank you 
for showing us things to think on. And today it's whatsoever thing, things that are pure. In Jesus Christ's name, the potentate king forever and ever. Amen and amen. Peace and blessings to you all.